Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and today it is not a garden tour. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what's going on in the yard and what's going on with their health and what's going on with their plants. Little things, just kind of a chit chat as I walk around. A lot of the plants are starting to die back. Now that squash is doing okay, but you know, the one that was in here died back and well, things are dying back because it's actually starting to get cold. Oh, well, look at the tomatoes. Beautiful. We want to keep those. Those are keepers and some potatoes. People have asked about, let's say, how much produce we grow. Well, let me say, I may not have the most beautiful garden because it's pretty much growing wild. What you see here, and you may say, oh, well, look, there's powdery mildew and stuff. That's because I water at night. I create that. I know that. But it's really self-sustained. It takes care of itself. I really do very little work out here. I'm mainly working on other things. The tomatoes grow wild. We come and pick as we want. They're getting a little sparse now. Those tomatoes, not all, not all Tomato plants are created equal, so those may like it warm. And as the weather cools, today, even Gary said, when he, before he took off, he said, I need a sweatshirt, I need a sweater, it's cold. Some tomatoes will do really good and some won't. The beets are doing really good in there in my chair. These uh, uh, containers I grow in, they're doing really good. The beans are starting to come up and I might be too late on the beans because I think our weather's really gonna turn. Really, we, don't buy a lot of produce. The produce I tend to buy in the stores now is maybe for the animals. Very, very little do we buy for ourselves. Sure, I go to the grocery store. There's still a lot of things I need. I might just walk and talk as I talk about this. I buy peas. I buy corn a little bit. Not a whole lot. Um, don't buy any more ginger. I don't need any more ginger or turmeric. We've got plenty of that. The stevia, we'll see. Looks like it's going to die back. It's gone the flower. But you know, you wouldn't buy that anyways. I haven't seen that in the store. Let's go through the gate here. So as far as produce, again, you, like I said, look, it's a, it needs a lot of grooming. I don't throw anything away. You know that. All this, leaves of any type, is gold. If anything, throw them in a container and just let them sit over fall and winter until spring comes. Let them sit. I mean, this particular squash plant that has given me so many squash, it's not even growing in any soil. I never put soil in there this year. I was composting in there. I, was throwing, I did a video on that. That was going to be the container I was going to just put the stuff in from the kitchen, leaves and stuff, and just forget about it and dump it somewhere when I needed it. I ended up growing squash in it. No soil whatsoever ever added into that. So my garden, though some, I've had a couple people say, oh, why don't you make it look really pretty? Well, you know what, to me, you know, in the eyes of beholder, to me, it is pretty. To me, this is what I want. I feed the birds, I let the birds come in, the seed eaters come in and eat the seeds, and then, of course, the insect eaters come in and eat the insects. Nothing's perfect in here. I'm not trying to be perfect, but I most certainly do not buy any greens of any type anymore. I am growing all the greens I possibly want for stir fry. I do all kinds of stuff. And I really do need to get into the kitchen and show you all. Here's my problem. I don't have anything as far as measurements. I go in the kitchen, I look in the fridge, see what's there, come to the garden, pick something and go for it. That's the way I do things. So it's a little different. I'm not conventional where people pick up a book and, and go through, oh, you had a cup of this, a teaspoon of this. And no, I don't do that. I come out to the garden, look around, say, hmm, I got greens. I have a little bit of cooked chicken. I put it in my chopper, I chop it up. It kind of looks like sawdust and then I take that and I put it in tacos or whatever I'm going to make and I know I'm getting everything from the garden. I do not buy much produce anymore. We used to buy bananas but Gary's growing bananas. 
I do want to get some more root vegetables going. Once in a while I buy a bag of organic carrots and I'm just starting to get into that. I was doing more greens because they just take off and they grow for many, many years. But look at all the greens I've got. Tea. We used to buy a lot of tea. Gary used to love making tea. We don't buy tea anymore. We have our own mint and that's what we do. We make our own tea. And I freeze it and in my coffee in the morning I put an ice cube and the ice cube is mint. So I don't buy a whole lot as far as fruit. Let's go through this gate. As far as fruit, again, the produce we're buying is mainly for our animals. I really don't buy a lot of produce. Gary has been eating papayas every night now. We get that many papayas. He loves papayas. You know about our papayas. So as far as what we buy, I'll buy some chicken. Generally, I buy boneless chicken breasts. That's what I tend to buy. We have a method of cooking it. Maybe I'll put, put it up the way we do it. We have our own mad method, scientific method. No, it's not. We just have our own method of doing it. But as far as produce, I have all the squash I want. And you may say, well, you don't grow that much. I grow zucchini, and this year only zucchini and hybrid zucchini as far as the squash. Don't think I do, did anything else, but the hybrids were beautiful. I had what, what, what I called was a white zucchini, a yellow zucchini. They tasted wonderful. They still are growing. Look at them. I've been picking and picking. The last tour that I did, the last garden tour a couple weeks ago, we had so much and I'm still trying to go through it. One thing about squash, it will harden up, but you've got it all winter. So it's really good. I try to leave it on the plants so they stay softer, the skin, but you know, whatever I'll use it so we have all for us we have all the produce we need I really don't need to buy produce only like I said for the animals oh yes I planted some apple trees we'll talk about that on the garden tour so I don't buy a lot of produce we have trees Gary's been planting more and more trees and see I have all the greens I want in the truck bed and even though he wants to rip this out and plant something else I've got three different types of Swiss chard growing in there. I've got the deep red, which you can see, and I've got the green and then the mixed one. And you can do so much with greens. You can eat them raw, you can eat them cooked, you can hide them in things if you had to. I don't buy any greens anymore. I, have, I don't think I've bought greens in the longest time. So that I don't buy. Let's see, as far as our health, people have wanted to know about our health. Hmm. I don't have any complaints. I mean, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Age, maybe, but I wasn't perfect when I was three. So, you know, what's perfect? I, I don't know what I was like when I had tonsils. I had tonsil problems when I was a kid. They pulled them out, guess what? They grew back, but they don't bother me. So as far as health, I'm going to have to really go back through a lot of my videos because Gary pointed out that, let's see, 15, 12, 15 years ago, we used to have a Disney pass and Gary couldn't walk. He had to use a cane. In the beginning, he was fine, but as time went on, he seemed to even get worse. So I got him a cane with a seat. And so that's what he would use because he couldn't stand. He had a problem standing. With me, it was my knees. My knees are really bad. Yes, I tore my cartilage when I was a kid. I fell and all this stuff. So I did have knee surgery on one knee and I was supposed to go back and do the second one. Ooh, let's see if Gary's bees are still there. Oh yes, they're still there. They're not moving. It's so cold. Look, they're just piled in there. Good, I'm gonna keep going. So as far as health, you know, it, it's really hard to talk about and think about when you're going day to day. It's like when you see something every day, you don't see your kid growing up and all of a sudden you turn around and your little tiny kid went from a little kid to a, a full grown adult. Well, it's the same thing as far as our health. But I will have to say, thinking back, absolutely our health is different. Much different. See, we have trees, we have all kinds of citrus trees up there. So we have all the citrus we want. That's because of the wood chips. When Gary laid the wood chips around there, these citrus trees just took off. So we've got all kinds of fruit growing on that. We do want to grow more. We are planning on doing more. But going back to our health, it did change. Absolutely. 
I do not know where Gary's cane is that I bought with the seat. It's got to be tucked away somewhere I wouldn't have thrown it out. He suddenly stopped using it. When he changed and started bringing in the wood chips and we started, you know, to garden and he went gluten free, he didn't need it anymore. He pointed out on some old videos for me to hike down this hill, I was using a cane. I would, with a walking stick, I should say. I would have to walk with a walk. I don't use a walking stick. You want to know something? The second knee surgery was canceled. I canceled it. Had I been gluten free and growing a garden, I bet you I wouldn't have needed the first surgery. Going gluten free has cut my inflammation. Yes, people have told me get the dairy out of your diet. You'll have less inflammation. Well, I cut out the gluten, cut back on sugar. Not completely out. If I had to, I would. I absolutely would. If my doctor came to me and said, you know what, you need to cut back on sugar, I would do it in a second. Not even think about it. I would figure out another way because there's always, in this day and age, there are so many good substitutes that you could use. So if I had to cut the sugar out, I would go to date sugar. I would go to something else. Absolutely. But right now, you know what my doctor tells me? Whatever you're doing, don't stop. That's what she tells me, don't stop. And Gary's doctor told him the same thing. Unfortunately, my doctor said they don't learn nutrition. They learn what medicine to give and that's all they're learning. And so she can't help me on gardening because she doesn't know, she said, and nobody that she knows knows. They learn about medication. So. Did our health change when we started gardening? Yes, and I believe anybody, I truly believe that anybody can change their health if it's something simple like that, where you can alter something in your diet. This is Gary's garden now. We just hiked all the way down. It's a hike. We have two acres here. Um. I have to be careful. Look at the, the vines are going to die back for the winter now. This is raspberry, blackberries, different berries. Got, uh, Gary's got different berries growing here. The reason I've got to pull back and be careful is I have learned a lot this past year that I didn't realize. I can't try to influence somebody that doesn't want it. I've learned that. If I say something, I'm going to have friends and family members thinking I'm talking about them, and I'm not, because it's not them, it's so many. I am finding out that the only people that can help themselves are the ones that want help, the ones that want to learn, and the ones that want to do something different for their diet, for their health. I have now run into people that are full diabetics, and in horror, I have found out that they don't alter their diet. This is quite a few people, one of which is now gone, my tax account, and I love that guy. He became a diabetic. He wasn't going to alter his life. Mm -mm. He was going to be eating what he wanted, going out, buffets, running to Vegas, always eating buffets, eating what he wants because he's going to be okay. I talked to his wife. She told me he's going to be okay. He can do what he wants because he's got it under control. He's gone. I lost him last year. Another friend of mine, same thing. I begged her. I begged her, my best friend, with all her health issues. And she said she'll do it when she retires. She'll change things. You know, it's not changing things. This is the thing. We have so many different opportunities to buy different things that would be a substitute that we wouldn't even notice the change and it's better what we're doing now i feel is better than what we were doing before i think the food tastes better and you know you don't need a garden like this one container two containers a small container with a chair you can grow all your greens in one container that you need they grow so fast you plant them you dump your kitchen scraps in there they grow as fast really as you eat them for one person set up a couple chairs my friend retired and died within the year as soon as she retired 
my other friend, best friend in high school. No, he's going to be okay. Doesn't matter. So he had a heart attack. That's what he tells me. Just a heart attack. So he's got diabetes. He doesn't need to do anything. Uh-uh. Because he's going to be okay. Let's go through Gary's garden. He's going to be okay. He doesn't need to change his diet. He's going to take care of himself. I don't know what that means. He's gone. Lost him, too. Found out another family member. Or I should say a few. We're supposed to change things in their diet. They didn't. They're gone. I don't know why everybody thinks, or I should say these people think, that they have something that other people don't, and they don't have to cut something out of their diet. I can understand 30, 40 years ago, it would be tough to maybe find a substitute. Now, there's so many substitutes. And like I said, the substitutes taste better. There, a lot of them are better. When you start eating fresh food and not buying food that's been forced right in from the store, you will taste the difference. You will feel the difference. Some people tell me I have so much energy. It's got to be from this. I mean, where else would it come from? I mean, th this is... Th oh, look, something fell here. Oh, no, it's growing through. It's a sweet potatoes growing through on the ground. Oh, we had one of his sweet potatoes so, last night. So simple. It was so simple. All I did was I peeled the sweet potato. I sliced it up like silver dollars, threw it in a pot with a little bit of water, got it to just, it was, you know, boiled it till it was a little soft, fork soft, and it was so good. I couldn't believe it. Well, of course, I know that because we do it all the time. My point is, it doesn't take much to cook. I know a lot of people don't want to cook. That I can't help you with. I like to cook, and I have no recipes. Not really. Oh, look, he's going to have a ton of bananas again. So, health-wise, I think we're better. Are we perfect? No. But like I said, if I had to cut something out, if somebody told me, you have to cut it out, then yes, I would without a doubt. And I would find another way to bring whatever I'm missing or feel that I'm missing back into my diet a different way. To think that there was nothing here a few years ago. Nothing here. Solid clay. That's all that was on the ground and Gary changed it. He changed it all. We have more food than we can use for ourselves. I do not, as you can see, need to buy any greens. It is not a pretty sight. The birds do come in here and nibble on things. But that's the way I want to garden. You don't have to garden that way. You can put tool on top and keep the birds off. That would be the simplest thing. Or the cabbage butterfly that just flew over there. You can keep them off. It's an easy, easy fix. There's a lot of easy fixes. I think if you sit down and think about some of your problems you've got, you'll figure it out. I don't look at it that way. I want nature to come in. I don't mind the cabbage butterflies and the cabbage moths and, you know, or the, the caterpillars and the birds. I enjoy that. I mean, maybe if I had a little chair set up and that's all I had set up was a chair and a container on top or two or three. Yes, I would baby it. Yes, I would cover it with tool. Yes, I would protect it. Oh, he's got sunflower. I would protect it because... You know, that's my livelihood. That would be something I'd want to eat. But I have so much here. We have so much here. To be honest, I don't even come down to Gary's Garden to pick stuff. I am now actually going out on my deck. That's lemon verbena growing there. That big thing. Boy, I gave it to him. It was tiny. I go out on my deck. I made dinner the other night. What am I going to put in here? Oh, I'll put some kale in here with some chicken and some greens. I went on my deck. I picked garlic chives. I picked onion, uh, walking onions I had there. I'm out of onions, so now I've just planted some more. I picked a bunch of greens on my deck. There was my dinner. I made my entire dinner off my deck. So half the time, I don't even have to go in my garden, and I rarely come down here. I don't even know where all this goes. I guess it goes back to the ground. We... 
have not bought any plant food of any type in years. And I am not saying that's bad. If you need to buy it, absolutely. But the plant food is coming back from the plants. The plants are now feeding the soil. The plant matter that falls, the leaves off of these plants, all the kale that's growing there and the collard that's growing there, those are some of the tree collards in there. When those leaves fall to the ground and they break down, the microbes, the earthworms all come, do their thing and feed the soil. So that alone has improved the soil. And Gary's been clearing a lot of this out. He wants to put, I guess, some more ponds in. Look at his mint. I hope it lasts all winter. Probably not, but we'll see. Maybe the water will keep it warm. This will be a nice experiment. The point is, I do grow more than I need. I, it's not like it's going to waste. I don't feel in any way it's going to waste. It's going back to nature. We have a lot of birds. We have now built a sanctuary that so many people have told me was unique, and I really didn't see it. You know, I didn't notice it that much in the beginning because I've talked about this when Gary and I first got together uh, over 20 years ago. He was so excited. He saw a goldfinch. Oh, look, a lesser goldfinch. He loves his finches. He was so excited. He would look and look, where is it? Where is it? Now, there are thousands of them because of the garden. This didn't happen until the gardens came in. So all this is going back to nature. The goldfinches eat the greens. Let them eat. Let them eat. Let them poop in my garden. That's fertilizer. Let them do their things, have their babies in their nests. And everything goes back to the soil. It's all going back to the soil. We can plant anything we want. We're starting to think of other things we may want to plant. Some people have asked, why don't you grow corn? I did grow corn. That was actually work. My daughter grew corn. She found out, you have to pollinate that stuff, really. Yes. Why do you have to hand pollinate corn? Well, if you don't grow enough of it, you got to hand pollinate it. That's the issue. If you don't grow enough of it. Because normally, like my friend said, oh, I'm from Seattle. We didn't have to grow. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't have to pollinate our corn. No, but you had a field of acres and acres of corn. So it's self-pollinated there. Look at this. Garlic chive seeds. I really need to collect the seeds. I mean, they come up everywhere, but I need to collect them. The point is, oh, this is amazing. Malabar spinach, look at that. That is an amazing miracle plant. I'll have to do another video on that because I've found out so much more about that plant. The point is, that was work. So will I grow corn again? Maybe. Maybe. It's not that important to me. If it was important to me, I would. It's not one of my favorite foods. So, I mean, I like it. Don't get me wrong but it's not one of my favorite foods, so it's not that important to me. So I might grow corn. My daughter grew pumpkins this year for Halloween. I don't know about chopping up a pumpkin for Halloween, but she did and they were so excited. I, it weighed a, a small ton. I, I can't remember what it was she weighed. It was like 20 pounds, 30 pounds. She was so excited. That's great. This is the first time they're gardening this year. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. So I don't talk about it. It's, you know, you, some of you that have kids understand how that is. So let's not make a big deal about the garden. I've tried to get her to garden for 20 years and suddenly they've got a massive interest in it. I think what it is is when they got their first few plants and they started to take off and you eat something off your plant, you go, oh my goodness, that did it. So what I did, without making a big deal out of it, is I would give her some plants. So I gave her a tree collard, I, I, we gave her a banana plant. Um, I gave her a papaya, which I found out was only that big when I gave it to her. And about a month later, she's telling me it's standing a foot to two feet tall. Oh yeah, those things take off. So now they've got an interest. I think once the interest is there, people have told me, oh, I can't grow anything. You can't grow anything because you don't have an interest. Take it from one that knows. If you don't have the interest, you're not going to grow. That's, the, that's just the way it works. You don't have the interest, you're not going to baby it. You're not going to go out and make sure it doesn't have enough water. It doesn't need to be watered. You don't care. Oh, it died. Oh, well. Can't do it. That's what happens. So as far as health, people have asked about our health. I think our health is good. I think we're doing really good. I think I'm doing good for my age. Um, I do not in any way need a cane. I am not going for my second knee surgery. I don't need it. I don't have any inflammation to speak of. If I eat wheat, I feel it, I know it. If I accidentally eat wheat, 
My knee will blow up. Uh, you know, when I say blow up, it gets big, it's swollen, it's sore. I know it. You go to a restaurant, oh, this looks really good. We went to a buffet and then the next day my knee is sore and stiff and it's hard to walk. And then I realize, oh, that, uh, that sauce was full of gluten. So my body's telling me, hey, I don't want gluten. It's going to cause inflammation. I'm going to tack your joints. So I don't bother. I've talked about my hands. I've talked about when I went to the doctor years ago because both of my hands were sore and my pinkies were stiff and I couldn't move them. Both of them. And both hands. And they said, oh, that's arthritis setting in. And yes, there's nothing you can do. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. 600 milligrams three times a day and you'll feel better. Uh-uh. I don't use ibuprofen. I don't even need it. My hands are not stiff, so I don't need that. So that's it. I think health-wise, boy, he's got a lot of bananas. Look at that. I didn't realize they're all over. They're all over there and all over there. No, no wonder the Orioles come in here and they nest all year, all year, all spring and all summer. They had like three clutches of eggs. They just love it down here. So health-wise, we're good. I do contribute that 100% to what we're eating. I don't want to get into the food in the stores. I've talked about it, but it's getting worse and worse every year. They're treating, there's, you know, treating a lot of foods, including greens. I found it once and they hit it. They called it new. It was a system where it was electronically treated so they could bag up greens and um, it would last for weeks in a plastic bag. And I think the reason they came up with the word new, N-E-W, capital, because you couldn't find it. It would get buried on Google. And they do change the name a lot. Just like aspartame, that gets changed. There's like 20, 30 names for aspartame. I cannot take that. I get a migraine from that. So if I want something, I use sugar. Sugar doesn't bother me. Plain old sugar. If I want sugar, I can't use any of the fake stuff. That will get to me. So as far as the food in the grocery store, I'm not putting them down. I'm not going to try to fight them. The whole idea on that, I've talked about that. Oh, look at his potato mint. I, let's go look at that. It's all about shelf life. So now the food in the stores, they will last for weeks and months. This is new this year, so we'll see how this goes. We're very excited about this. It grows a little potato. So we'll have to see how that goes. I don't know what else to say. They're doing it to the dog food, too. My vet was unaware of it. I looked it up, told him, and he was in shock. So the dog food doesn't have any, any nutrients in it as far as enzymes. You'll always have your minerals because the minerals don't get hurt. The minerals, you can't really zap out. They're minerals. They're like rocks. They're there. But as far as vitamins, it's still, they'll be honest with you if you ask them who's doing it. You do lose your vitamin A, your vitamin C, a lot of your vitamins. So that's why I always try to get people grow one container of food. So if you're buying stuff from the grocery store, then you can add something you grew. So you've got the enzymes and all the proper nu nutrients that are coming out of your food because nothing zapped it, nothing did anything to it, it wasn't treated. And then you can add it to what you're eating from the grocery store. I think it'd make a big world of difference. I know people that are doing it now and telling me, oh my gosh, they had health problems and now they haven't noticed it because they're adding things into their diet that their body so desperately is screaming for. And if it could talk, you would hear it. Mine did, like Gary said. He said, you looked older 10, 10 years ago and you walked older. Somebody said to me, gee, at your age, you must be, you know, it must be you have a lot of aches and pains and stuff and everything. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I may throw my back out if I get on the ground and start really working a lot and my back may hurt for a day or so. But do I live with daily aches and pains? Not that I notice. I, I don't know. Stress will bring out a lot of aches and pains, too. I mean, we all live in a stressful environment, so we do the best we can. But that's it. So, produce. I buy very little produce. The only produce I buy would be for our pets. And as far as health, I think once 
Gary went gluten-free and brought in the wood chips and decided to start gardening, that changed everything. And with my garden and his garden, we do garden different ways. He wants a garden that he doesn't have to take care of. He does not take care of his garden at all. He comes down here once or twice a week and waters. He doesn't maintain it. As you can see, the leaves just fall and go back to the ground. Um, he will do walkthroughs at time because he does like to come out here when he has time and do things. When you have a garden, you do want to trim a little bit, but he doesn't have to. That was the whole idea. He doesn't have to. As far as me, I have containers, so I do have to water. In the very hot summer, uh, I do water once a day. And then in the winter, I only have to water once or twice a week, even in containers, because the bottom of the containers will hold dampness in there. And it depends on where I put the holes on the containers, too. If they're on the bottom, they'll drain more. If they're about an inch or two up, they'll hold some water. So the plant will pull from the bottom. The soil will wick it up. So that's basically it. So I don't buy produce as far as for us. I may have to buy onions. We didn't plant enough white onions. Potatoes, there's something. I haven't really bought potatoes lately. I kind of, I don't know, I've been using other stuff. But potatoes I buy, and that is something I may want to start to grow more of. But that's why we got the potato mint. But as far as anything else, gosh, we grow most everything. Once in a while, I buy a bag of organic carrots when they're on sale. But now we're growing our own beets. Gary brought in a beet the other day. We ate beets. So we're buying very little. I'm going to say... Without stretching, I don't want to stretch the truth. So let's say 85% of all our produce comes out of our own yards. I think that's pretty good. It could be more, but let's just say 85%. And as far as health, we both feel better. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I have more energy now than I even know what to do with. And sometimes so much energy that I work well into the night. I do stuff. And I do contribute it to food coming out of the ground, straight to the table, straight to us, and not having to be transported, put on a shelf, transported for weeks sometimes, put on a shelf for weeks until we get to it, and not having any pesticides. We do not use pesticides. We do not use plant food. If we want to make plant food, we grab some leaves. Colored is great. Or or a kale, throw it in some water, let it rot, and then dump it back in. I do not spray our plants with anything. I don't take the water that is rotted. Some people spray it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just don't see Mother Nature doing it. I don't see Mother Nature taking um, food and spraying the plant. She may rain on it, but I don't know. We haven't done that. If you like doing it, that's fine. You know, but the more you want to do, the better. We want to do less. But all in all, that's it. So I hope I answered some questions as far as health. Some questions as far as how much produce we buy. And do we enjoy it? I absolutely love the garden. I know Gary does too. I absolutely love the garden. And he loves his ponds. To me, that looks like more work, but he says it's less. I like my solar fountains. I like watching the birds. There is nothing more relaxing than going out and watching the birds take a bath in the solar fountains. I just love it. So with that, now I've just done a walk and a talk. And I hope I've answered some of the questions on that. And we'll see as time goes on what else we want to plant. Because we really should. We really should try it with more things. And we will when spring comes. I'll think about different things. But we should maintain a lot of our greens through the winter. It does depend on the winter. What, what we're hit with this year is actually spring that was hard on us last year. We'll see what happens. Whatever nature brings us, we will deal with. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Is your deck okay? Yeah. I'm glad you squeezed all the water out of him. <laughs>